What's up guys, Brandon Havrilla from Redmax Events. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another product spotlight. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this crank stand. This is a heavy duty crank stand from Global Trust called the ST180. Now what this is for is for cranking up your sections of truss, whether you're cranking it up to leave it up and flying you know, things like lighting or sound off of it, or whether you're using this crank stand as a support or a lift to crank truss up in the air and then fix it to the ceiling of a venue or something like that, this will always be helpful. We use this a lot when we're building these large truss arches or banner supports where we'll crank the top support up on the crank stands, put it into place with leg supports, and then we'll remove the crank stand from the equation. Now the ST180 weighs 229 pounds and that's the unit itself. So it is a little heavy to lift into a truck or a van. It's something you're definitely gonna want either a ramp or a lift gate for in terms of getting this in and out of your vehicle. Now the max load capacity of this crank stand is 440 pounds. So normally if you're using two of these, you get 880 pounds, but there's some other things you have to put into the equation in terms of how the weight's being distributed between the two crank stands. Now the minimum height of this crank stand, which stops right here, is five feet and one inches. The reason that stops right here is because this top piece is actually external and it is sold separately. So this is a separate piece you have to buy to mount your truss on top, but the crank stand itself comes with everything you see up until this point, which is five feet. That makes it ideal if you're loading it into a mid-roof van or something like that, it allows you to stand it up. Now the max height of this crank stand is 18 feet. So that means when it's fully extended, which it has three different tiers or three different levels that you can extend it to, when it's fully extended, you get 18 feet out of it. The base of this thing comes in at 18 inches by 18 inches. The wheels do stick out a little bit, but the base of the structure is 18 by 18 if you're looking to fit it into a truck or a storage facility. Once you unfold the legs or the outrigger supports on this, it is 86 inches by 86 inches. And of course, that's like a cross shape. Now, as I mentioned before, the top piece is sold separately. So if you're on Global Trust's website or you're on your dealer's website and you're searching for the top piece, it's called the STSB006. That's the top piece and of course, the crank itself is the ST180. Those are all the important details and specs of the crank stand itself. What I'm gonna do now is show you how to get it from this position, which is it's folded up or collapsed and sturdy position to the outriggers being extended and then actually cranking this crank stand up into the air. The first thing to do when you're starting to open up this crank stand would be the crank handle itself. It does store down straight, um, that's to protect it. What you're gonna wanna do is loosen this here lift the crank handle to the side and then tighten it back up. You are gonna to wanna to transport it, always pointing straight down just to prevent this from breaking off because it is a plastic handle. Once you have that off to the side, we can begin extending the outriggers and dropping them into place. It's important that once these are dropped down, they're also tightened enough that the bottom wheels come off the ground just a little bit so that you can swivel them around. What that does is takes the weight off the wheels, the plastic wheels on the bottom, and it puts all the weight on these metal outriggers. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the safety pin or the cotter pin that stays attached and then remove this pin itself from the outrigger. You'll see the outrigger will then begin to drop down. You can drop it all the way till the last hole on the leg. Drop it in, make sure you put that cotter pin back in and you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing to all four legs. All right, now that we have all four of the outriggers extended down and the cotter pins back into place, we can begin to lower them or increase the tension on them to lift the crank stand off the ground. Now these tension rods, you just screw to the left or the right and you'll see they'll start to extend. The plate will hit the ground and then you'll feel this start to get tighter and it'll actually lift the crank stand off the ground. As you can see, now we could swivel that wheel. That's just enough. You don't need to go and lift this crazy off the ground. You just want it enough that the weight's not on those wheels. So I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around. And at this point, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure the crank stand stays level. As you can see, we have all four wheels lifted off the ground now. I'm able to fully turn all of these wheels, which means the weight is successfully off of them. As long as you look at the crank stand and it does look straight up, and it's in the position you want, you are good to go. The next step would be to put your truss in the crank stand itself. What you're gonna do is remove the cotter pin, remove the safety pin, 
sit the truss in these two yokes, which also adjust. So depending on what size trussing you're using, you can adjust these and slide them left to right. Once the truss is in, make sure you put your safety and cotter pins back in to prevent the truss from coming out, and then you're good to start raising it up. As I mentioned before, there's three tiers to level this up, and you wanna make sure you go one tier at a time, obviously starting at the top, extending that as far as you need to go, and then coming down to the second one and the third one. I'm gonna see how high I can go here, but the warehouse ceiling is gonna limit me because it's definitely not 18 feet, but it'll at least show you how to raise the first two sections. You'll notice on the side here, there's a red safety pin, which is locking that in. So I'm gonna have to loosen that, turn it 90 degrees, and then begin to crank up. You'll notice on that same side as the red safety pin, there's gonna be holes every several inches. Um, what you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of figure out which hole you need to go in, depending if you need to go all the way up to the last one, which is indicated on the metal, or if you need to stop here because you're not going so tall, you can then start to extend the other two. Once you get just before the hole you want, you're gonna to wanna to rotate that back 90 degrees you're gonna feel it click halfway in, and then as you approach the hole, it's gonna lock all the way in. Like that. You'll notice if I go to lift beyond, I'm gonna get stopped by the next safety pin. So I'm gonna lower it back down a little bit, rotate that safety pin 90 degrees, and then I can begin cranking the second section. Again, right before you approach the hole you want, rotate it 90 degrees. And it'll lock in just like so. We have the last section, which also has a tightening knob here, so just make sure that's loose so it's not grabbing the pull. Rotate the back pin 90 degrees and begin to crank up. Again, before you approach the hole, make sure you rotate the pin and it'll lock in just like so. Once you get it to its max height or the height you need it at, you can tighten this rubber plate, which goes against the metal here. It's just extra support to protect the weight. You could also drop this handle back down so it's out of the way. And as I mentioned, depending on the application you're using this for, if you're going up and over a band or a stage, you're set. You could leave it like this, throw some sandbags on the outriggers, depending on the weight you have up top, and you're good to go. If you don't have truss on the top of this or any weight on the top, these might start to get stuck when you're trying to lower it down. So you might have to grab it and just pull it down a little bit to give it a little assistance so it doesn't get stuck. But if you have weight on the top, truss or lighting or anything like that, it should come down nice and easy just as it goes up. To bring it down, you're just gonna repeat the same steps, but opposite. You're gonna go backwards and you're gonna lower it. Make sure you remove the pin, rotate 90 degrees, lower until almost the last hole, rotate the pin back and continue that process for each level. I'm gonna go ahead, lower this back down and show you guys how when you fold the legs up and the outriggers, you wanna make sure you tighten the tension rods so that they're pulled snug against the body of the crank stand. So the first step when you're collapsing the outriggers and putting them back into the upright position would be to loosen all of them so that the wheels are back on the ground. Once you do that, you can remove the safety pin and the cotter pin. You're gonna raise the outrigger up until you reach the last hole. Place the pin back in. Place the cotter pin back in. And now you're gonna to wanna to make sure you tighten the tension rod, spin it to the right, and you'll feel it slowly bring the outrigger up against the body and tighten it so it's nice and snug. This prevents movement in the truck and is ultimately gonna protect and make your crank stand last longer. Once again, guys, this is the Global Truss ST180 crank stand and the STSB006, which is the top piece that holds the truss. If you found this video helpful, if you like this video, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up. As always, make sure you subscribe to my channel for future content and future videos. Turn on that bell so you get notified when I post new videos. And as always, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. I appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.